All right, here's number 13. We have a function and we need to take the second derivative and then put pi over six into that second derivative. So that shouldn't be very hard. Let's start off by finding the first derivative um, where it's going to be two times the derivative, derivative of sine, which is cosine, minus, what is the derivative of cosine? It's minus sine and we're gonna use chain rule here minus sine 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So let's simplify that. Uh, 2 cos x minus and minus make plus. Bring the 2 to the front. And we get 2 sine 2x. So that's our first derivative. Let's take the second derivative. Uh, 2 times the der derivative of cosine, which is minus sine x plus 2. The derivative of sine 2x by chain rule is going to be cos 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Uh, simplify that a little bit. 2 times 2 here is 4. And now we're ready to evaluate this, right? So f double prime of pi over 6 is minus 2 sine pi over 6 plus 4 cosine of 2 times pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Now you can use your unit circle or um, just use your calculator. Pi over 6 is 30. Uh, sine of 30 is a half. So this is a half. And cosine of, oh, pi over 3 is uh, 180 divided by 3, which is 60 degrees. So cos of pi over 3 uh, is the same as cos 60, which is also a half. So there's no roots. This works out very nicely. This is negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. So our answer is, is 1. Excuse me. And that's answer A. All right, number 14. Um... Uh, the first thing I notice here is that, you know, absolute value of x to the four-thirds is the same thing as x to the four-thirds. So I would uh, replace this function by just x to the four-thirds. You know, it isn't true that the absolute value of x to the one-third, like the absolute value of x to the one-third is not the same as x to the one-third because uh, this formula is false when uh, x is negative, right? But when you put that power of 4 on there, regardless if it's negative, both sides become positive. So that's why this formula is true here. And uh, I'm going to replace, I'm going to get rid of those absolute value bars and replace it with this formula, um, just because it's going to be easy, easier to take the derivative um, when it's like this. And how about I multiply this out before I do the derivative? Otherwise, I'd, I'd have to use product rule, right? Uh, by the way, to talk about increasing, that's when the derivative is positive, right? So right away, I know I'm going to have to do the derivative. Let's multiply this out, though, before we actually do that derivative. Um, there's really a 1 here. 1 plus 4 thirds is, it's like 4 over 3 plus 3 over 3, which is 7 over 3. And now I think we'll do the derivative. That way we avoid having to use product rule. So 4 thirds x to the 4 thirds minus 1, which is 1 third. And the derivative of this, we bring the 7 thirds to the front, x to the 7 thirds minus 1, which is 7 thirds minus 3 thirds, which is 4 thirds. And this is 28 over 3, x to the 1 third minus 7 over 3 x to the 4 thirds now you can actually uh, um, we want to we would like to solve where this is equal to 0 so we need to factor this but uh, there's a there's a good there's a little technique to use that uh, we should factor out the lowest power the smallest value so in this case it's x to the 1 third and as well, why don't we factor out 
this denominator of three. And notice in the numerators here, we have a common factor of seven. So let's, this is, I think, the best thing to pull to the front. What do we have left, left over? Well, here we just have a four, right? Four times all of this is just that. And seven over three has been complete, re completely removed. So that's gone. Um, what should be here? Well, it's going to be a power of x. x to this power plus one third should give me four thirds. So this is really a power of one here. And so I don't even have to write it. All right, we factored f prime of x. Now let's solve it equal to zero. That way we'll find our critical numbers. Um, so we get seven third thirds uh, times x to the one third times four minus x equal to zero. So that means either this is zero or this is zero. And of course, if I cube both sides here, I come to the conclusion that x is zero or x is equal to four. So those are my two critical numbers, right? x equals zero and four. Now, what we're gonna do is we're, we're looking where x is increasing, right? So why don't we make a little sign chart here? Um, let's make a number line. Let's mark off these two numbers that we just found. And uh, let's record the sign of f prime of x. This is f prime of x right here, right? When we put uh, a number in this interval inside of f prime of x, what kind of value do we get? Do we get positive or negative? For example, negative one. If I put negative one in here, um, negative one to the one third is negative one. Four minus negative one is five. So we have a positive times a negative times a positive. So this is negative here. Uh, number in here, if I put it in, um, I would have positive and another positive. So this gives me positive. And if I take any number out here, such as five or 10, uh, this factor will be positive, but this one will be negative. So we get a negative result for f prime. Now remember, f prime is increasing wherever the derivative is positive. So we've just identified on the interval zero to four, the derivative is positive. So that means on the interval zero to four, the function is increasing. So let's see if they have the interval zero to four as one of the answers. And they do. So it's increasing on the interval zero to four. Um, so I think uh, that's all there is to that question. Let's uh, go to number 15. So an intermediate value theorem question. Um, we have a polynomial. We want to look at this polynomial between negative two and one. So I have no idea what the graph of this looks like, but um, yeah, let's just draw a little bit of a little bit of this graph. Uh, if I put negative two in here, what is the y value going to be for that? I'm just going to use my calculator for that. Uh, it's going to be 4 times negative 8 plus 5 times 4 minus 4 times negative 2 plus 2, which is negative 2. And if I put the other x value, 1, into there, what do I get? I get 4 plus 5 minus 4 plus 2, which is 7. Let's plot those points. Uh, seven, I guess, would be up here somewhere. So, and negative two comma negative two would be down here. So this graph, um, when it's considered on the interval negative two to one, it uh, goes between negative two to seven. It uh, might even go beyond that, but for sure, it achieves every value between negative two and seven. Now, um, existence of a number, usually we call this C, right? But that's fine. Um, of a number C satisfying such that F of C equals one of these numbers. Well, what I'm saying is that if any of these numbers lie between negative two and seven, 
then that'll be a, an answer. Um, so I would expect only one of these numbers should lie between negative 2 and 7. Let's see if that's true. This one is lying between there and there. This one is not, this one's not, this one's not, and this one's not. Okay, so 5 is right there, right? Like the idea is this, if, if I draw a dotted line here, since this is a polynomial, it's continuous. The intermediate value theorem only applies to continuous functions. How possibly could I draw a, a continuous function attaching these two points without going through that line, right? It's impossible. If I'm not, a continuous function kind of means I'm not allowed to remove my pen from the paper. So if I have to draw a nice continuous function here, eventually I'm going to be forced to cross that line in order to make it to my destination, right? And this would be the value of C, where F of C equals 5. All right, good enough. Let's do the next one. All right, um, same question, I think, here. Similar question. Okay, last time it was intermediate value theorem, but this time it's mean value theorem, right? Remember the mean value theorem says there exists a number C, such that F prime of C is F of B minus F of B f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So here my uh, a and b, and again they're writing x0, often though it's usually denoted by c. It um, doesn't matter though. So this is a, this is b. So we know that there's going to be some value of c such that f prime of c is f of negative 2 minus f of 1 over negative 2 minus 1. Didn't we calculate those values last time? So f of negative 2 is negative 2, and the other one is 7. So we get that, right? Did I do that right? Negative 2 minus 7. Okay. This is negative 9 over negative 3, which is positive 3. Um, so we know that there is a number such that f prime of c equals 3. So the answer is A for that.